Hello you guys, welcome back. So I know I'm really behind on new movies, like review my reviews for new movies, because, I mean, there were a good bit of movies that just came out last week, three of them in total that I can count that I want to do a review on. So I'm trying to play a little catch-up, so I thought I'd start with the Fathom event, with the movie that was only in theaters for a couple days. I am talking about the independent horse slasher flick, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey Two. So, of course, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2 is the sequel to, as we know, the 2023 movie, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. After its massive success, I mean, I would say it was successful in its own right. I mean, it was on a $50,000 budget, and it made $5 million, so, I mean, that's a success in its own right. They, of course, decided to make a sequel to this and continue on with what we now know it as the Twisted Cinematic Universe. Or Twisted Childhood Universe, actually. Why did I say cinematic? I got Marvel in my head. Get out of my head, Marvel! But, I mean, I'll get to that in a moment, but I actually really want to talk about how I feel about this movie. So, when I saw the first Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, I was like, okay, this is just a cheesy slasher flick. But, I mean, they're obviously not tricking anybody. That's just a guy in a mask. Obviously not a monster. But the point is, is that I was seriously entertained the whole time. I mean, it's obvious this was just a ridiculous flick made by independent filmmakers, but it was still, it kept me entertained. And then in this one, the movie got upgraded. Same kind of shot, same kind of story, but really all the upgrading came in was in the special effects, because now... They don't just look like people in masks. They actually look like real monsters here. This kind of movie, it's not something that I think everybody is into. I mean, you really kind of like got to be into this kind of movie to really kind of enjoy it. Because if not, and you don't enjoy it, you're just going to say this is just a stupid parody of fairy tale characters with a darker side. And I mean, that's really pretty much what it is. You could say it's a parody in a way. Because I mean, it's a ridiculous cons. It's a ridiculous idea, ridiculous story, with ridiculous looking characters. So, I mean, what do you do? You just tell your actors, you know, we know it's ridiculous, just have fun with it. And I think that's really why the first movie excelled, because they knew all those things, so they just let the actors have fun. I mean, you just have fun with something and you show that you're enjoying it, I mean, of course, I think the movie would be great. And that's obviously what we see in this second film. Still the same ridiculous ideas, but still they are having fun with it and enjoying it because they know it's ridiculous. So I think that's a plus there. The one character I like to talk about most of all is Tigger. I mean, when I knew that Tigger was going to be in this movie, I was like, oh my God, Tigger's going to be here. Though... He got little screen time, not as much as I was hoping. But I was thinking, like, in the screen time that he did get, I was thinking, like, oh, my God, what if he bounces after every person he is trying to kill? And I'm like, oh, my God, that would be so epic. And it's so funny at the same time. I will feel like I felt like this mo movie got too serious, but still stayed true to how the first one was. The only time I think it really needed to get serious was when we saw Christopher Robin's backstory. It really jogged a thought into my head like what if what we watched like when we were kids was just what he wished he saw in the Hundred Acre Wood. But what we see in this movie is what he actually saw. I'm like that's an interesting take when you look at it like that the seriousness kind of works but that's really as far as to serious as i think it should have gotten i mean there were some other serious parts i felt weren't needed but overall still the movie was still entertaining all in all i'm gonna give winnie the pooh blood and honey 2 with c plus i mean it was a solid flick and i really didn't see it getting any higher than this grade because i mean i don't think it's supposed to be an a plus movie this is just supposed to be an enjoyable movie or the filmmakers just to kick back, have fun, and do their own thing. Before I end this video, though, I'd like to go a little bit more into the Pooniverse, though, that they are creating with this with this series. Of course, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2. Then we got a Mickey Mouse movie, Mousetrap and Steamboat Willie. It's all part of this Pooniverse thing, or Twisted Childhood Universe. I mean, we got uh, Peter Pan, of course. We have a... Uh, 
Pinocchio. The one though I'm really looking for is the Bambi one. Bambi the Reckoning. Because, I mean, I could just see it. I mean, Bambi wanting revenge on the hunters that killed his mom. And then all of a sudden becoming like this mutated deer and just bulldozing over every hunter he sees in the forest. I'm like, I could totally envision that. So that's the big one I'm waiting for and hoping it does just as well as this. these two. So if you guys have seen Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey 2, please comment here down below what your thoughts were on it. Also, if you like my other videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys next time. And remember, stay epic.